Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be taking a look back at a, a series of mini-comics that I self-published uh, in the year 1995. I gave it the highly original title, 12 Pages, which is indeed all it really was, just 12 fairly random uh, pages of illustrations that I was doing at the time. It eventually got published in uh, real comic book form, which I may show you uh, as well, but I thought it might be more fun to uh, go back to the original stuff. Like, this is what the pages were uh, as I did them by hand. You can see that I had a separate sheet of paper for um, putting in uh, the printed out lettering. I would take this to Kinko's and shrink it down. And uh, I thought I'd give you just a little walk through the debut issue here. Uh, 12 pages number one. And I believe that this was colored with markers, maybe, and then I did color copies to do my own uh, very rudimentary full-color uh, front cover art here. And uh, it's, it's funny to look back on these things uh, because a lot of it, a lot of the humor is very, very dark. Uh, those of you who... Uh, know my videos and, and my books, especially uh, some of the more, you know, like happy-go-lucky books. You might be surprised at how dark some of this stuff gets. But let's go ahead and uh, have a look at this first uh, page here where I, I did a little uh, decorative border. It was all very influenced by underground comics like R. Crumb and different stuff like that. And let's have a peek at uh, the very first cartoon and uh, be prepared for comics that don't really make a whole lot of sense. I mean, I wasn't... <laughs> it's like I wasn't even filtering anything. I just, whatever came to mind, I would do it, you know? So the guy climbs to the top of the mountain and just sits down and the snow falls and he becomes part of the top of the mountain. Um, it's one of these things where you like, you're either into it or you're not. And uh, in a funny way, I sort of, uh, as I looked back at these things from you know, so long ago, I thought, boy, it would be kind of fun to go back and try to do this type of style again. Artiste in Southfield. I was living in Southfield, Michigan at the time. And I have my little French character. Ah, cultural wasteland. Uh, what does that say? Blockbuster video. Oh, rest in peace. Why did I move here? What was I thinking? Uh, no sidewalk. Ah, to be in Paris or New York, or even Royal Oak. Now, Royal Oak was this sort of trendy area of uh, uh, southeast Michigan, suburb of Detroit. And you see I put a little punk rock, dude. It is actually still a pretty hip place to, to hang out if you live in this region. But it's too late. I've signed the confounded rental agreement. Alas, I'm hungry, and I don't feel like cooking tonight. So it's Boston Market. <laughs> that was my idea of a complete story, Artiste in Southfield. Never really brought that character back. Now this one gets very dark, uh, but in a way I think it works as a story. So let's see what you think of this. Not really a story, but it's just a weird, darkly comic idea. Manhole. So he's got the Eat It Joe's sign, and he doesn't see the manhole. He falls and comes down here, uh, splap into this black goo and then the machinery takes over, rolls him into what looks like some sort of, uh, you know, enchilada maybe, or I don't know if I'm even using it for spring roll, I don't know. Falls through a chute here, then gets turned into a sausage, and he is being eaten at uh, Joe's restaurant. Really weird, really dark. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but yeah, I was. This was all just stream of consciousness stuff. A lot of this. Let me pull back and because some of these are just not even cartoon pages. They're just like sketches and doodles and stuff. And so that one you can see there's uh, just different little doodly ideas that popped into my head. Um, blockhead. This must be. <laughs> This I must have been at a coffee place. I was drinking a lot of coffee back then, folks. Let's be honest. What does it says? Preservatives up the wazoo. <laughs> and uh, over here, cappuccino at the Uptown Bagel Cafe, Royal Oak. I don't know if that place is still open. Maybe one or more people out there can answer that question. Um, but here we have Little Fremo with apologies to Windsor McKay. This is a tribute to Little Nemo in Slumberland. The little boy wakes up 
or he, and he finds that his bed is floating off into the clouds. Goes into nighttime, I guess. I don't know what I was doing there. And sees a brontosaurus. <laughs> and I didn't have an ending, so I just wrote, to be continued. There's a certain freedom to doing a comic like this where there's just sort of no expectations. Because there's no audience. I mean, there almost nobody saw these things. I was just doing it all for fun. Brazil. I don't know if that was the name. I think it was the name of a coffee shop. The, not the last coffee reference you're going to see uh, in this video, I don't think. Happy ending. Now, I like this one. It's quite simple, but it's kind of uh, kind of fun how it works. You see the car driving along. He goes straight off a cliff. He's falling straight down. You would think to his death, but as he flies, he comes down to another sideways cliff lands on that road and just keeps on driving. Some of this stuff is just very surreal little ideas and um, you can you can see me sort of chuckling at them myself because it's been, you know, 1995, this is so long ago, I kind of forgot about things. Escalator, sitting at, in 12 Oaks Mall, I realized all is not lost. There is a, a 12 Oaks Mall here in Michigan, some of you maybe have been to it. I like the drawing of the build. That would not, that would make a, you know, it wouldn't make a bad t-shirt, don't you think, if you just sort of separated that out? Some of this stuff could work that way. At the risk of going too far into this thing, I'm going to go ahead and show you this one. Little guy running along. This is all just all made up as I went along. And he runs through a hole. He comes out the other side. And it's just sort of like animation almost, hopping over increasingly large uh, hills that... Uh, come into his way. Obstacles. This one so big that you can't see as he leaps over. Lands. You're really invested in his journey now. And he sees the brick wall. Well, nothing to do. No way around it. I'll just have to run straight at it and... <laughs> the end. Certain violent undertones to this whole endeavor. I was not in a super uh, good frame of mind, I'll be honest. Uh, during these days I was uh, living by myself. I um, uh, spending a lot of time alone, uh, not very happy with the way my life was going. So there, there. I think you know the darkness of my own mindset was coming into. Uh, this is sort of autobiographical here, I suppose. Breakfast on the run, toast the old standby, a bowl of some lightly sweetened granola type cereal. You get tired of it a lot sooner than you thought you would. No coffee maker. This is true. For the, at first, I had no coffee maker of my own. Have to get it from across the street, and it's almost like it came from my days living in Japan, where you would go get a can can of coffee uh, from a vending machine. It was a common way of getting coffee, and I don't know why I waited so long to get my own coffee maker. Love sick idiots. Now this one very sort of autobiographical, kind of bearing the soul of Mark Crilly in 1995. The poor sap, he never knew what hit him. Can't stop thinking about her. Bad sign. Maybe I should call her. Nah, you always call. Women hate that. <laughs> I don't know, do women hate that? My character thought that women hate that. Uh, gotta play hard to get. Not so damned eager. But if you don't call her, you know she won't call you. Maybe she's waiting for you to call. Kinda doubt it though. <laughs> There's just three panels of like nothing and then, she sure is pretty. <laughs> ha! Yeah, but my days as a single guy, not necessarily. There are a lot of stupid kind of puns in here. Good lord, this doesn't make sense at all. If, you th if you're finding this un unbearably bizarre, don't worry, we're almost through to the end of it. I don't know why I decided I would go all the way through every page of it, but we're committed to it now. Motor City Coffee Comics. Uh, that, that is not a real uh, series of comics. This one I kind of like just because it's so simple. The um, hill starts to sort of morph and then pops up and it becomes the sun. Good idea? I don't know. Could be. Fashionably negative, man. Now this is based on sort of my perception of, of a certain negativity that, uh, that I was encountering in the 90s. Kind of like too cool to enjoy life kind of thing. Fashionably negative man. I dare not be optimistic about anything. I'd look like a fool. The whole damn world is just turning to shit. Sorry about the language, folks, but this was me back then. I can hardly bring myself to face it. I mean, I'm not personally suffering, but still. Actually, it's a rather nice evening, and no! 
I must maintain my bleak outlook. I've got to watch that. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, not the kind of Mark Crilly that you're used to seeing. Um, and uh, it, like I said, it, was, it, it all sort of came out of my, my mind frame in those days. This is more just randomness. Oh, so much randomness. Um, this one truly goes nowhere. This is like the most pointless comic I've ever made. Well, I say, er, puff, puff, mm. <laughs> he falls asleep. Just like the readers would getting through that comic. This one is kind of fun. The key comes along, goes into the keyhole, and the keyhole comes alive and walks away. Does it make sense? No, definitely not. New hairdos. If you're looking for any ideas, I have a few of them for you. I like this one. <laughs> And then this one, it requires some something to hold it up, like a rack attached to your forehead. Ha, ah, let me know if you'd like to see me do doodles like this. Here we are, finally, at the last page. Spilt coffee. So much coffee. So much coffee. Uh, I don't know why I kind of like this one, the skyscraper that just sort of bends down and spits, splits itself in half. Fission? Is that what that's going? Had to put the end in there, just in case people didn't understand. And then... This must be just the reader's reaction to this whole comic. It doesn't make sense. And in the end, I just did my full-color uh, version of that. But there you go, folks. That's issue number one of 12 pages. There's at least a second uh, issue. I'll hold off and do that for a uh, part two video. Uh, but just to show you how far things have gone for me from the, my 12 pages day, let me do my usual thing by bringing out the books. And saying thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting them, like Brody's Ghost, my graphic novel, The Drawing Lesson. Boy, talk about different from the 12 pages. This stuff so sort of cheerful and happy. I have many different types of uh, uh, personality within me, I suppose. Mastering Manga 3 and Manga Art, my very latest book, Waiting for Chibi. Uh, truly my latest book to come uh, in the mail so that I can do a little unboxing video for you, but I think it's time for me to wind this video down. I want to thank you all for watching it. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.